This is Math 151. Uh, we're going to take a look at section 4.5, which is about derivatives and graphs. And so let's think about what we know about some derivatives. Uh, so if we think about the first derivative, you know, if we have some function f, and we take the first derivative, if um, the first derivative is positive, right, if it's greater than zero, well, uh, a positive number, we know that it's increasing. We know if the slope's positive, the, um, the line is, is going up somehow. So the function itself, it could look like that, uh, look like that roughly, right? It's going upwards. Uh, the slope of it is always positive. And we also know that if the derivative is negative, it's going uh, downward. It's decreasing. So we know that these are increasing. Right there, they're going up, and these are decreasing. And we're talking about like what the what the y values are doing as the x values are are increasing, are getting bigger. Right as x gets bigger, in this case y increases, in this case y decreases. Here's where my first derivative. One of the places where my first derivative is zero. Here's another one. And notice in this section of the graph here, the, the first derivative positive. So here it's uh, increasing, here it's decreasing, here it's increasing. Here the first derivative would be negative, here the first derivative would be positive. And these places where it changes uh, from increasing to decreasing, we talked about this before, are extrema, uh, max mins. Here's a function. And we want to find where there are maxes and mins for this. And we don't, we're not going to worry right now if they're absolute or, or just local. We're just going to find anything that's local. So first thing we'll do is we'll find some, some critical points. We'll find where that derivative is 0. Or it could be that the derivative is undefined as well, right? If it's undefined, it might be like a cusp or something like that, and it's still a maximum point, but there's no derivative at that point. So we'll take the derivative of this function. And it's that. And we want to know where the extreme might happen. And the places where they might happen is where the, um, where the derivative is 0. So let's set this equal to 0 and solve it. Sorry, that should be a minus. Uh, I could factor out a 3, factor that again, uh, negative 3 and positive 1. The derivative is 0 when x is 3 or negative 1. So if I think about that, like on my graph, here's 3, here's negative 1. These are the spots where the extrema could happen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test some regions. I'm going to see if it changes state. So what should happen is um, it should change state from positive to negative or from negative to positive if this is if this is an extreme or if this is an extreme. So I'm going to pick something in this region, something in this region, something in this region. So let's just try uh, f, uh, f prime of negative 4. And if I if I plug that in to this function, sometimes you can just kind of like hand wave and, and not actually do the calculation. But I'm going to do the calculation in this in this first case. So let that equal x. And then I'm going to plug negative 4 back into the derivative, right? Because I'm figuring out what the slope is doing. So uh, my derivative 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. So notice my derivative is positive here. And if I plug in, let's say 0, and I, I'm going to go through the whole calculation here. It's negative 9. But notice that I could have, it's negative. I don't care the value, it's just negative. Um, notice I could have just eyeballed that, right? Plug in 0, this is going to be negative. And then I'm going to plug in something larger than 3. And let's plug in uh, 10. 
and I'm not even going to use my calculator for this. This is going to be like 100, negative 60 minus 9. That's going to be positive. So notice that the slope's positive here, slope 0 here, then it's negative here. So this means here it's going up and then down. So this must be a maximum. And uh, here it's going down, negative slope, in decreasing, and then it's zero, and then it starts increasing again. So this must be a minimum. And I could say, I could figure out like where they actually happen, right? The point, the x value is negative one or three, and the y value, I can plug them back into the original function to get them. Like where it happens depends on if we're talking about the x or the y value or the actual point. So let's plug them back in and see what we got. So one of them is negative one, so I'm gonna say negative one is stored in x. And then I'll plug in my original equation, right? Because I want the, I'm gonna figure out the max for that, the actual value on the function. And it looks like that happens at four. So it looks like it has a local maximum at four. And if I plug in the three, it should give me a local minimum. Negative 28. And, you know, good. The maximum is higher than the minimum. That should happen. If that doesn't happen, you know, maybe I did something wrong on the calculator or something like that. But I found them. And notice the way that I found them. I took the derivative, found when it was equal zero. Those are my potential extrema. And then I tested either side of it. So that's that's one way I could I could go about it. All right, let's check, uh, let's check this one and see if where its uh, local max and mins are, if they exist at all. So let's take the derivative of it, set it equal to zero. And it looks like it happens at one spot when x is zero. So think about the graph of this, x is zero here. The derivative is uh, is zero at that point, so it has like that flat slope. So it's a potential max min, but it might might not be. Let's check either side of it. So I'll just check uh, negative one and one, and I'm going to check the slope at those at those values. Oops. So let's see. If I plug in negative one, that's uh, three times negative one squared, which is three. It's positive. And if I plug in positive one, it's also positive. So notice that the slope doesn't change state through that zero. And what I mean by that is it doesn't turn from positive to negative, right? It stays positive the whole time. That means this must be increasing the whole time. So this would have uh, no max min. It's always increasing, except at that one point where it hits that zero. Um, and Let's take a peek at a, just a quick graph of that, just to get at our curiosity at what is actually happening. Oh, of course, it's a cubic, right? It's increasing here, flattens out for just an instant, slope of zero, and keeps increasing. That's not a max or a min. All right, same sort of analysis. Where are those extrema? Let's take that first derivative. Let's see, 5 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds minus 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds. Whew. Boy, that's ugly. Uh, we could think of this a couple ways. We could factor out the 5 thirds. Yeah, let's do that. Let's factor out the 5 thirds x to the negative two-thirds, which would leave me one minus uh, x to the four-thirds. So we've got a couple of cases. These two things are multiplied together. When do they equal zero? Well, we have one case where it's undefined. If we try and plug a zero into here, uh, we'd be dividing by zero, zero to a negative power. So critical points are undefined or when it's equal to zero, that derivative. So Things to check are zero. And when would this be equal to zero? One minus one is zero. So was when does x to the four thirds equal one? And that happens at uh, one and negative one. 
All right, so we've got three kind of critical points to check at zero, negative one, and one. Um, and by check, I mean, we're gonna ch see how the state changes between them. So we've got four regions to check in here. So let me think about this one. Uh, I'll pick a number that's like a long ways away. Oops, sorry, switch those. Um, I'll pick a number that's a long ways away from negative one. Let's plug in um, negative eight. And if I plug negative eight into this, um, this will be negative. This will be positive, but this one's multiplied uh, by five. It's going to be much bigger. So this would be negative, this region. And if you don't, if you can't kind of see it, just um, plug it in the calculator. Prime a negative one half. Uh, that's going to be positive. Let's pick a half here. Do, do, do. That would also be positive. And let's pick something big here, eight. That would be negative. All right, so we can see that it doesn't change state at that zero of the undefined, but it does here and it does here. So this is decreasing and then increasing, right? So it's going down, slope of zero, then it's going back up. So this point right here at negative one must be a minimum. Increasing, and then from here it's increasing and then starts decreasing again. So this point at one uh, must be some sort of local maximum. And then if we wanted the y values, we could we could find those as well, plug them back into the original equation. Uh, let's take a peek at this graph, see what it looks like. Yeah, look at that. There's a local minimum, there's a local maximum. Kind of a good looking graph. <laughs> All right, so there they are. You know, one thing to, to notice here is as it's changing state, it's it's uh, decreasing, boom, and then it's increasing, or it's increasing and then it's decreasing. This shape is still, it still kind of has the same shape. Like this whole shape right here, we call it concave up because it's, it's turning towards upwards, right? Like it's, it's continually curving upwards. And this whole shape right here is concave down. It's curving towards the downward. So if I, if I go back and look at these, both of these are concave up. In other words, like if the trend continues, like this is decreasing, but it's slowing and how it's decreasing. This is increasing, but it's increasing and in how it's increasing. Like it's curving towards upwards. If this keeps doing it, it'll make a bowl that like will hold water. These ones, if these ones keep going the way that they're going, they, they aren't uh, a bowl that would hold water. So these are concave down. And that actually happens um, at this point right here. Right here, the concavity changed on this shape. See how this is all concave up. It's increasing, increasing, like it's speeding up. It's almost like it's acceleration, right? But then it's it's still increasing, but it's starting to slow down in the rate at which it's increasing. That happened with this one too. Uh, we had an x cubed plus one. This is all concave down here because it's slowing down. It's increasing, it's slowing down. And then it hits this flat spot for a second, but then it starts speeding up again. And this part's concave up. These points where the concavity changed from concave down to concave up, those are called inflection points. And if I look back onto like this sketch that's right here, it happens about here. That's an inflection point. And I might, I might change this picture a little bit. I don't know if that's the same color or not. I don't think it is, but that's all right. Let's say it does that. That looks like it's probably an inflection point as well. And inflection points are where the concavity changes. So I have this idea of it, it's increasing, like it's increasing this whole time, but notice here it's concave up, but then in this whole region from here to here, it's concave down. And then from this whole region forever, it's concave up. 
Things that are increasing can be concave up or concave down. Things that are decreasing can be concave up or concave down. Concavity and if it's increasing or decreasing are distinct descriptions. Like you don't need to be one to be the other. And notice what happens at these, these points of concavity. The um, We have a change in the acceleration. Rate of decreasing, boom, rate of increasing. So um, we can get at these actually by the second derivative. Um, the second derivative gives us some descriptions. An inflection point happens when our second derivative is zero. So we have some sort of change of state. If it's concave up, that means the second derivative is positive. And if it's concave down, the second derivative is negative. This gives us some really good information. So, it, for example, if I know that, um, that my first derivative is, is zero, that's a critical point. That, that is a potential um, max or min. So if the slope is zero, it's flat like this. The second derivative at that same point uh, is positive. So that means it's concave up at that point. So concave up, it has to look like this. So that means then that this must be a local minimum. Or if at that point where the derivative is zero, if my second derivative is negative, that means it's concave down. So it must look like that. So that would be some sort of local maximum. Now it could be that the second derivative is also equal to zero at that point. Um, we, we can't draw a conclusion. We can't draw a conclusion from that. We'd have to do some more analysis. So this makes it so we don't have to test regions like we were doing before, which is kind of a little bit of a pain. Uh, we can take first derivative, we can take second derivative, and then go from there. And I'll go do an, I'll go back and do max mins in just a second. Um, I just want to find it, these inflection points real quick on this. Like where is it where is it changing state from increasing? Uh, I'm sorry, from concave up to concave down. So first derivative, two x squared minus twelve x plus nine. Second derivative, six x minus twelve. Now we've we've actually already analyzed this one a little earlier in the lecture. I think it might have been the first. It was the first problem that we did, and we came up that uh, with where the extrema were. But notice we also can find the inflection point. So six x minus twelve equals zero. So x must equal two. That's where it changes state from concave up to concave down. And when we found those extrema before, we, we said that we had a max at negative 1 and a, and a minimum at 3. So here's where x is negative 1. Here's where x is 3. And right about here, this would be this would change some uh, the state of the concavity. So from concave down to concave up. All right, so let's do a little bit of analysis of what the graph of this might look like. f of x is x to the fifth minus 5x cubed. Um, so let's do first derivative. Uh, 5x to the fourth minus 15x squared. All right, and let's do a uh, second derivative too. 20x cubed minus 30x. Okay, so let's find potential max mins. So when is this equal to zero? And what I can do is I can uh, factor out a 5x squared. So this gives me x is 0. If I solve this, this gives me plus or minus root 3. So I have three potential spots for max mins, uh, 0 and plus or minus 3. Now instead of testing regions, I'm just going to take the second derivative and see if it's positive or negative at those, at those points. Or if it's zero. If it's zero, I don't know. If it's uh, negative, that's going to be a maximum. If it's positive, that's going to be a minimum. So let's plug in zero. Uh, that's zero minus zero, zero. So we don't know with that one. 
let's plug in uh, square root of 3, positive square root of 3. So this is 20 times positive square root of 3 cubed minus 30 times square root of 3. And do, 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 do. That's positive. So the concavity is positive, right? So it's bending towards upwards. So uh, at root three, uh, that was positive root three. This must be a uh, minimum. Negative root three. If we were to plug that in, that's negative. So it's negative when that is root three. So it's curving downward. So that would mean that this must be a local maximum. Now what's going on at zero? Like again, it's inconclusive, we're not sure, but if we graph it, we can get a decent idea of it. So I'm gonna graph the original function, which was x to the fifth, uh, what was it? Minus five x to the third. There's my max at negative root three. There's my minimum at positive root three. And notice what happens here. It changes concavity, right? But um, it's not a max or a min. All right, uh, give that homework a try. Let me know what questions come up as you're working on it. And good luck.